His mother didn't like Valka. And sometimes it happened that the child was unwanted. Just like what happened to Valia. She had just graduated from a technical school. When she was raped by a stranger. Who dragged her behind the nearest garage. Covered her nose and then punched her in the face several times. The girl was unconscious for a while and when she woke up. It had already happened and the rapist was striding away from the garage. The girl lost her innocence as well as her faith in men. Love and justice. She hadn't called the police. In those years it was unseemly to do such a thing. Shameful and embarrassing to ask for legal advice. No. Verya would not tolerate such shame. And she hid it from everyone. Then she got pregnant and gave birth to a healthy child. And Verya kept thinking that as soon as she held her son in her arms. She'd fall in love with him. But it never happened. She was a proper girl. Raised by morally strict parents. So she didn't abandon her child. She didn't leave him in the maternity hospital. She decided to raise her herself. Verya sent the child to the nursery at an early age. She took him only on weekends. And then he went to school. The child was very independent. He was self-taught and would go shopping and even cook dinner alone. Because he knew that his mother was a very good mother. For as long as he can remember as a young boy, Valka disliked dogs. And this was because he was afraid of them. This stemmed from an incident when a drunken neighbor gave birth to a boy. And had a large dog. Valka was sitting on the roof of the garage for an hour when a dog named Buana growled and bared his teeth. Generally. It was not customary in those days to keep dogs in apartments for fun. So they were tall. Strong animals whose fearsome appearance unnerved burglars. That night. His mother announced to him that they would have to stay at his sister's house. In a small village for a year. And Verya decided that it would do him no good to go to work on shifts to earn money for the cooperative. You and I are parasites. We both have to have our own house. Valka is not yet an adult. But he understands everything and supports his mother. Especially because he loves his aunt. And she loves him. Because she has no children of her own. And she often reprimands her sister for being overly strict and cold with her son. She doesn't know what happened to Verya eight years ago. Valka ends up in a small town with the familiar name of Proletariat. The small town has a small pottery factory that produces pottery. And his aunt works there as a painter painting pottery. He had to go to where his aunt worked. And most of the time he ran into the dog. Once he spent an hour debating whether to go to his aunt's house or not because Mukhtar had just gotten a delicious sugar bone from the guards. And any aggression against his prey would be stopped by him with a vicious growl. His aunt asked him where he had been for so long. But Valka was ashamed to admit how afraid he was of the dog that lived in the factory gatehouse. As Mukhtar ate his food, the little boy cursed himself for his cowardice, and slowly made his way around him rushing towards the store where his aunt worked, and where he could have watched her work for hours. Without taking his eyes off her work, the dog immediately became a completely different person. He was no longer a guard with a free will. In that moment he was not interested in anything, and no one ended up blackmailing him. He ran all over the village, down to the river and frolicked in the tall grass. In that moment people ceased to exist for him. But the Mukhtar found the boy walking boldly on the factory's territory. And it would creep up to him. Waiting for Valera to take out his weapon. To push him away with a rough shout. Or otherwise influence the dog. A spirit which the boy did not have. And whose soul flew away every time he met those attentive dog's eyes. A year passed in this way. And in late fall, the river began to freeze. But not yet solid. Only near the banks. That day, Valka's mom came to pick him up. 
His sisters hadn't seen each other for a long time. And she decided to go to a relative's house for a few days. She had bought a house and wanted to take her son home. But Valka decided to make his mom. An aunt happy by catching fish for soup. He put on his little coat. Took a fishing rod and went to the river near an old water. Mill on a rickety bridge. The little boy had long loved fishing. And Valka carefully walked down to the river. Sat down carefully. Threw out the rod. And caught the fish. The little boy was so happy. His aunt and mother must have been proud of him. He was a grown man. Finally. The fish had gathered a bag and Valka decided to go back. He put away his humble fishing tackle and stood up. With an awkward turn. The little boy with his back facing forward fell into the water. Immediately his coat was soaked through by the cold water. And his rubber shoes were full of water. Which began to pull him towards the bottom. And the boy struggled and flailed his arms and cried out. Trying to call for help. Which. Most unfortunately for the people. Was very close to the house and stood on the steep bank of the river. But the old water wheel could not be seen from there. And the boy's faint voice could not be carried up to the top. Suddenly a dark figure swept along the bank. And jumped into the hole beside him. Someone clutched him by the collar and pulled him upward. And his mother and aunt had run along the bank. And they pulled the boy to the shore. Where he was unconscious. When Mukhtar Valera stepped out. Gasping for breath and staggering to his feet. Verya kissed his cold wet nose and cried thank you. Thank you Mukhtar. The dog licked his face and wagged his tail a couple of times. Verya hugged her son and the scary dog and took a cab to the house. After saying goodbye to her sister. Verya sat in the front seat. Varka sat in the back with Mukhtar and all three lived in the new apartment. The boy and the dog became best friends for life. If you like this story. Please click like and subscribe to this channel. We have more to come. All the best. The stepmother hates her future husband's children. And concocts a dire plan to get rid of them. She leaves them in a forest full of hungry wolves. But she doesn't take into account their guardian angel. Matthew and Helen got a pair of adorable twins. Jessica and Finn. They are the brightest stars in the life of the couple. Helen loved her babies very much. And gave them everything they needed or wanted. Matthew also loved them very much and made sure they were provided for in any way possible. Through hard work, he managed to change from the poor kid when he first met Helen to this rich man who never made his family feel lacking in anything. His life was perfect in every way. He thought it couldn't possibly get better and wasn't ready for it to crumble. When the children were almost eight years old, Helen became seriously ill. No matter what Matthew did. What specialist she sought or what medication she sought. She just kept getting sicker and sicker until one day. She never woke up again. Matthew's whole world fell apart in that moment. He can barely manage his farm anymore. Let alone take care of his children. The pain of losing a mother also hits the child hard. Finn starts running away into the woods at every opportunity. While Jessica just hides in her room. They didn't know how to deal with the pain. And neither did their father. Fortunately. The villages near their farm are filled with the kindest people he has ever met. Offering all kinds of support. Some old women even come to the house every day to see their children. And help out at home. They understood the need for a woman's warmth at home. After all Helen had always been the housewife. And the main caregiver for their two children. When Matthew saw the kids improve. After spending time with the older ladies. He made a plan. Although he is mourning his beloved wife. He believes his life needs to move on. He believes finding a new partner will help the children calm down. 
This particular decision was triggered by something crazy Finn did one day. This is an ordinary day in their home. Matthew is at home eating lunch while Jessica hides in her room. Finn comes home suddenly with a box and proudly presents his father. With the latest addition to the family. In the box. Sits a puppy. Finn couldn't be happier for his new partner. However. Matthew disagreed. He felt he could barely take care of a child. Let alone another young life. But after many protests. Finn remained firm. At times like these. Matthew really misses his wife. She will know how to communicate with him. That's when he thought. Maybe finding another motherly person would help. Finn and Jessica remembered that day as clearly as it had been an hour ago. They are playing outside with their puppy Kai. At this time. A car stopped on the side of the road. A beautiful woman came out and asked about their father. The kids happily took her there unaware that she was going to be their new mother. Natalie is nothing like what she looks like. Matthew sees a beautiful, young, stylish woman who loves children. He met her while he was in town on business. They start chatting. And upon learning that Matthew is a wealthy farmer, Natalie puts her paw on him. According to Natalie, children are wonderful creatures. A home is not home without a mother. And no man should be able to cook for his family. All these words sounded like music to Matthew's ears. He couldn't believe that he was so lucky to come across someone like her. In fact. The kids soon discover that she is not as good as she seems. At first. They all liked her. She seemed gentle and caring. Trying to make them feel loved as much as possible. Whether it's a bedtime story at night or a delicious snack. After they've been out playing all day. She always goes out of her way to make them feel loved. It's almost too good to be true. They find it hard to believe when the truth is revealed. Her true colors are soon revealed. Once the wedding date was fixed. She became very irritable. She would scream and chase them. Throwing things at their heads. If they left the house during the day. She would lock them out and deny them lunch. She even tied Kai to a tree outside to expose him to the rain. Since Matthew was often away from home. He never really understood what was going on. When he's at home. Natalie behaves really well. So. When the kids revealed to him what she was doing. He didn't believe them at all. He thinks they're just interfering with their relationship. Because they're jealous of their relationship. He had no idea what was going to happen next. One day. Jessica and Finn were in the kitchen trying to get some food. When they heard Natalie approaching. They immediately hid in the cupboard. At this time. They heard something terrible. Natalie is talking to someone on the phone. From what they heard. It looked like she was talking about hurting their father. She wants all his money. Before Finn could stop Jessica. She had rushed out of the cupboard and started screaming at Natalie. What she had heard. Natalie was surprised. Of course. But quickly figured it out. She grabbed their clothes and locked them in the trunk of the car. She was tired of dealing with kids who were always interfering. With her plans. She knew she had to get rid of them. And knew how. Jessica and Finn screamed for hours. But no one came to their rescue. Exhausted and terrified. They drifted off to sleep without hearing the car start. When the children woke up. They were confused about where they were. They looked around and saw only a dark forest. This is an area of the forest they are forbidden to enter because it is the domain of wolves. They recall what they remember and conclude that Natalie is trying to get rid of them by dropping them here. They didn't know what to do. And it didn't take long for things to get worse. Before they can come up with a plan, they start seeing movement in the surrounding woods. 
The emaciated wolf crept out of the bushes. Their teeth are sharp and they make a ferocious growl. With saliva dripping from their mouths. Finn stood in front of his sister. Shouting and trying to scare the wolf away. But of course it had no effect. So. He can only prepare himself for the attack. Hoping to somehow save his sister. But at the moment when the wolf pounced on them. Another figure appeared between them. The unthinkable happens and Kai follows them into the forest. Now squeezed between the twins and the wolf. For the first time. Finn discovers that Kai is not a dog. But a wolf. He is protecting them. The wolf cowardly fled after several bites from Kai. Kai then helped the children back home. After more than an hour's trek. They finally saw their home on the mountain. When they returned home. Their father was very anxious. And the stepmother was shocked that they could return. The two children immediately recounted the whole experience to their father. Matthew is shocked when he discovers that his beloved twin brother. And sister are missing. So when his kids came back. He believed everything they said. He gets mad at Natalie. Kicks her out and breaks off the engagement. He was so angry that he almost lost his children to see the truth. But he was grateful for their return and he swore to keep them safe. This time. He won't be looking for a new wife because he knows Kai. Will protect his twin siblings from all kinds of dangers. Do you believe that monkeys not only live peacefully with humans but also raise human children? This is a true story, and even if we can't believe it, it happened. Next, let me tell you this wonderful story. That story happened in the 1960s. A photo taken when a little girl was found in a jungle in Colombia. Due to living with monkeys for a long time, she could no longer speak like a normal person, walked like a monkey and was very afraid of seeing humans. When people brought her back, she was completely incapacitated. After a long period of time, she slowly learned the human way of life. That's when people really understood why she was being raised by monkeys. A five-year-old girl went camping in the jungle with her parents. After reaching the deep mountains, she and her parents got lost. Her parents searched for a long time and called the police. But after a lot of people trying their best to find it, they couldn't find the girl. At that time, everyone thought that the girl had died because there were so many wild animals in the jungle that it was difficult for an adult man to survive, let alone a weak little girl. But it was unbelievable that the girl did not die, but met a group of kind monkeys and raised her. After that, she often took her family for a walk in the deep forest, eager to find the group of monkeys. Who would have thought that a little girl could survive in a desolate jungle? That in itself was a miracle. She lived in the forest with monkeys for seven years. And she was 12 years old when humans found her. It took a long time for her to reintegrate into human society and at the age of 29 she found her true love and got married. After returning to human society, she couldn't remember what her biological parents looked like. But always remembered the monkeys who took care of her for seven years in the jungle. Later, as she got older, the girl no longer had too many fears and even nostalgic about the seven years of hard life in the past. The girl recalled that when she first got lost she was very frightened and walked alone in the jungle for a long time, and finally she gave up her struggle and started crying. Unexpectedly, she disturbed the nearby monkeys. When they first saw the little girl, the monkeys were very curious about her, so they all ran over to see it, which made the little girl cry with fright. The monkeys were also frightened. After a long time a monkey tried to approach the girl and give her food. The girl ate the food when she saw it. After that she lived with the monkeys. They taught the little girl to climb trees and forage and the laws of life in the jungle. Gradually the little girl adapted to life in the jungle. During her time with the monkeys, she gradually became accustomed to walking naked, climbing trees and sleeping in tree holes, and she could even imitate the sounds of monkeys. Because the competition for survival in the forest was very cruel at that time, there were always some animals to provoke the monkeys, so the little girl was often injured. 
It was fortunate that she was protected by monkeys, but she had been away from human society for too long, so she was no longer familiar with her previous life. At the age of 12, a jungle expedition came to the jungle and found the little girl. At first they were very surprised and the girl didn't want to go back with them and attack them. After a long struggle, they brought the girl back to the human world. Fortunately, the girl was only 12 years old at the time, so it was not too late. After human education, the girl gradually returned to normal and finally returned to human society with human consciousness. Later, although she did not find her biological parents, she was adopted by a well-meaning couple. She experienced unprecedented warmth and enjoyed warmth that she hadn't enjoyed in years. She knew that opportunity was not easy to come by so she studied very seriously. Many years later she became a wildlife biologist, often visiting the jungle where she used to live. Later, after she got married and had children, she often took her husband and daughters to camp in the jungle. Due to living in the jungle for a long time, she developed a skill, such as climbing trees, and she was very athletic. She also helped her daughter catch birds and squirrels a few times, which brought her a lot of joy. She wrote a book about the many ways to survive in the jungle, and it was loved by many people once it was published. She was very eager to meet the monkeys who had taken care of her and raised her. It was just that the group of monkeys had probably left or migrated. It was a pity that she never saw them again. In those lost days, the relationship between this girl and the monkey touched countless people. Their stories were reported online. Many people were very surprised and very curious about this girl's experience. They came to interview the girl, but the girl just wanted to live a normal life. So she refused. Her life didn't come easily, so it is hoped everyone not to bother her. Although the road to happiness is extremely bumpy, but fortunately she finally accepted human beings and had a beautiful family life. She never forgot the monkeys who took care of her and wanted to repay them. Animals are very smart and it is hoped that everyone can protect them and live in harmony with them. It is often heard that a home with a mother is a complete home. And this applies not only to humans but also to animals. As long as it is a mother, whether it is human or animal, it is very worthy of our respect. Nowadays, the internet is very developed. And we often see too many mothers laying down their lives for their children in the animal world. This is a true and moving story. This pastoral dog was a stray dog, wandering outside every day and did not know who its mother was. It was unknown to the world and lived by picking up garbage, so it often starved. It had no fixed place to live, and was often chased and beaten by playful children, making life very hard. It became less timid, and would hide in the corner and tremble whenever someone approached it. One day it was looking for food as usual but was bullied by a group of children. Just happened to pass by a female monkey. After seeing this timid and frightened puppy, it immediately rushed to save it. It growled continuously at the children and kept the puppy behind him. When the children saw the ferocious monkey, they were very frightened and left. The puppy was very pitiful, and the mother monkey felt very distressed. It felt the puppy like its lost child and decided to protect it later. So it stroked it over and over with its paws to reassure it. From time to time it licked the dog's face with its mouth. Perhaps the dog was so stunned by the sudden concern that it didn't dare to move. And was petted and shed tears by the mother monkey. After that day, wherever the mother monkey went, it took the puppy with it. It was afraid of accidentally losing the dog. Such a move made passersby stop and watch. Some people wanted to take the dog from its arms out of curiosity. Unexpectedly, the dog hugged the female monkey tightly and ran up desperately, roaring at the people, which shocked everyone around. When someone wanted to hurt the dog, the female monkey was no longer gentle. People were deeply moved by the behavior of the female monkey and offered them food. There was a transracial bond between the monkey and the dog, and they depended on each other. After receiving the human food, the mother monkey put down the puppy to bow to the people, and then took the food very politely. After getting the food, it gave the puppy the food and starved itself. The mother monkey did take the puppy as her child. 
This love is so great that it should be learned by all of us. We should love animals like this monkey. If we don't love them, please don't hurt them and try to protect them.